So with our definition in place, we're going to turn um, the webinar over to Jewel, who will talk about identifying SLD dyslexia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jewel. Thank you. When we think about um, reading disabilities among our um, learning disabled population of students, there are really three basic profiles that emerge, and these profiles have been supported by the literature base. The first profile is that which is characteristic of students with dyslexia, our most common um, reading disability group. Those are students with specific word decoding difficulties, and those are students who would be described as non-alphabetic word readers, as inaccurate word readers, and as non-automatic word readers. So these are students who both lack automaticity at the level of the word, and then understandably fluency at the level of connected text. Um, the second subcategory of students with reading disabilities, less common, are students with specific reading comprehension difficulties. Those are students who are what we would describe as non-strategic comprehenders or suboptimal comprehenders. And then finally, there's a population of students that we regard as having a mixed reading uh, disability uh, profile. And those students have both word recognition and comprehension difficulties. Um, by and large, the, the most prevalent disability profile when we're talking about reading is the specific word decoding difficulty profile, and that's the profile characteristic of students with dyslexia. In your LD guidelines, if you go to page 35 of the guidelines, you'll see a discussion about patterns of strengths and weaknesses related to students with each of those uh, reading disability profiles. When we're talking about um, screening students for dyslexia, we want to be cognizant of some of the red flags that may emerge as early as preschool. So if we're looking at a preschool student or we're looking back in a student's educational record to do a record review, you may see some of these red flags emerging in preschool. You may find evidence that the student began to acquire spoken language later than most children. You may find evidence that the student had difficulty with larger phonological skills, such as rhyming. You may find that the student had difficulty pronouncing words. Uh, for example, saying biscetti instead of spaghetti, or lawn lower for lawn mower. You may find that the student had poor auditory memory for nursery rhymes or chants, that they may have been slow to add new vocabulary words to their language that they may be unable to recall the right word when communicating. Or they may have had trouble learning numbers, days of the week, colors, shapes, or how to spell or write his or her name. Moving into early elementary, kindergarten, grade three, some of the indicators that teachers and parents can look for include a failure to understand that words come apart. For example, that snowman can be pulled apart into snow and man and later on that the word man can be broken down still further and sounded out as mm, ah, mm, representing the highest level of phonological awareness, phonemic awareness. We'll be sure to post to the CERC website a resource that helps to outline the developmental sequence of phonological skills in children so that you can be aware of what a typical uh, developmental sequence looks like. You may find that your student has difficulty learning the letter names and their corresponding sounds that the student has difficulty decoding single words or difficulty with single word reading in isolation, that they have difficulty spelling phonetically, or as they're moving toward the end of grade one, grade two, and grade three, that the student is reading disfluently. They're choppy, they're labored, they're slow. You may find that a student relies on context for word recognition. Those are all indicators that your child may need to be looked at more closely um, for um, of dyslexia. In upper elementary, moving into middle and secondary, some of the flags that you may recognize in your students um, who are at risk for dyslexia include a history of reading and spelling difficulties, include the student avoiding reading out loud, the student reading slowly, where oral reading is labored and not fluent. Your student may avoid reading for pleasure. They may demonstrate an inadequate vocabulary, both spoken and written. They may have difficulty spelling. They may resort to using less complicated words in writing that are easier to spell than uh, attempt to spell words that they may own in their uh, vocabulary uh, phonetically. 
When we think about screening for dyslexia, it's important to remember that a screening process should be brief. This is not a formal diagnostic assessment. The screener should assess specific skills that are highly correlated with a broader indicator of reading achievement. The purpose of the screener is to identify students who are likely to be in need of intervention. Those broader indicators of reading achievement that are important to include in a dyslexia screener include indicators of the student's uh, facility with letter naming, phonological awareness skills, letter sound identification, single word decoding, rapid naming, oral reading fluency, encoding or spelling, reading comprehension, and handwriting. The State Department of Education has provided to Connecticut school districts a menu of research-based universal screening measures for K-3. There's a link on your webinar that will allow you to access those um, framework. What you're going to see in those frameworks are um, research-based, curriculum-based measures that are sensitive to the indicators that also happen to correlate with um, screening students for dyslexia. So on the um, State Department of Education website, through that link, you'll find, for example, information about AIMS-WEB and the component measurement errors, uh, areas affiliated with AIMS-WEB. You'll find information about DIBBLE, Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills. You'll also find information about DIBBLE's NEXT and their electronic component of M-Class. Information is also posted for Ed Checkup, Steep, and two computer adaptive reading assessments that have been approved by the State Department of Education. If your district has already adopted one of the measures um, endorsed by the State Department of Education as part of your SRBI model, then you're more than halfway there when it comes to developing your dyslexia screener. So if you've adopted one of those measures, you already have in place a screener for letter naming fluency, letter sound fluency, oral reading fluency, and reading comprehension. Beyond those indicators, districts will need to augment um, their existing SRBI framework, consider adding some of the following, for example, to your universal screening protocols in order to flag students who are at risk or suspected of having dyslexia. First would be to develop a red flag checklist for teachers and parents to complete. Second, in those next three bullets, you're going to see reference to something called CORE. That stands for the Consortium on Reading Excellence. Core measures, phonological segmentation tests, phoneme deletion tests, and phonics survey, are an excellent norm reference, criterion reference set of assessments that are useful for educators in determining students' risk status and also in terms of helping educators to develop a targeted scope and sequence of intervention for students in the areas here of phonological awareness and phonics. Another area that you may wish to add to your universal screening protocol is an assessment of spelling. A commonly used tool in districts that can be applied here is the Words Their Way Spelling Inventory. Once you've screened your student for dyslexia and you've identified that he or she is at risk, what do we do next? First, districts will need to develop decision rules for inclusion of students in SRBI tiers of intervention using performance profiles and cut points. At what point, for example, do you advance a student directly to Tier 3 for intervention? Non-responders or slow responders receiving Tier 3 interventions should receive additional diagnostic reading assessments. If a disability is suspected at any point, then a student should be referred to special education. When I'm referring to diagnostic reading assessments, I'm referring to informal diagnostic reading assessments that enable the educator to target specific instructional needs, not to identify the presence of a disability. We'll be sure to post resources to the CERC website to assist districts in developing cut points and decision rules. A formal evaluation for dyslexia should include 
assessment of red flag areas. To that end, evaluators should be addressing specific referral questions. Referral questions will help frame the development of an assessment battery. One size does not fit all. Focused assessments of component language and reading abilities should be included in the comprehensive evaluation for students suspected of having dyslexia. Input from an interdisciplinary team, your speech and language pathologist, your special education teacher, your reading interventionist, your assistive technology professionals, and your school psychologist should be secured when you're planning your evaluation. It's important to note that an evaluation for dyslexia does not need to be conducted by a neuropsychologist. This evaluation can occur at the level of the school. When we're moving toward considering identification for dyslexia, I'm going to draw your attention to these um, a kind of a four-square approach. Let's start at the bottom left. The first step toward identification or assessment would be for classroom observations to be conducted. As soon as red flag um, areas are, are noted for a student through the dyslexia screener, an observation in the classroom should be conducted in the area of suspected need. Secondly, you should be conducting a developmental history of the student. Your red flag screener would be a valuable resource in helping you to secure developmental information, as would a parent interview. A review of educational records is essential so that evaluators can identify patterns of difficulties that may be related to red flag areas. And finally, a review of formal assessment results. Diagnostic reasoning is essential to diagnosis. Big ideas related to dyslexia identification, a summary for districts. First thing that districts should do is to develop and administer a red flag checklist for students in K through 8. The second thing is to administer early screening assessments, at the very least, to students in K through 8. Train faculty in the use of a classroom observation protocol. And finally, train faculty in diagnostic reasoning for the identification of students with dyslexia. Thank you.